1924年、米国が日本移民の入国を禁止して以来、我々は今日という日の国を待っていた。米国人は白人種の優秀性を説いていたが、今度はどちらが優秀民族であるかを知らしめてやる。敏腕賢明なる登場閣下は、白人どもが馬鹿げた野祖教を吹ける。眠っている者を見て攻撃を返す。我が国の興軍は百中百発。ついに日本帝国東土木天皇の上に公営を、はい、米国戦闘艦アリゾナオクラハマペニシベニアメリーランドウェストバージニアカリフォルニアなどはついに海底の木地と起用バンザイバンザイ December 7th 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. With the unbounding determination of our people, we will gain the inevitable triumph, so help us God. On December 8, 1941, the grim work of salvage began at Pearl Harbor. The Pacific fleet was shattered, the fleet on which had rested not only the balance of naval power in the Pacific, but the security of the homes and cities of the Western United States as well. And in the months that were to pass before this fleet could be rebuilt, the remnants of the U.S. Navy had the almost hopeless task of holding in check the mightiest array of military and naval power it had ever faced. Prime Minister Hideki Tojo and his war cabinet had assumed the task of eliminating the United States as a factor in the European war by involving it in a desperate struggle in the Pacific. For the first time, the incredible plan of the Axis coalition was clear. To gain immediate control of the Pacific, we knew we must first destroy the American fleet at Pearl Harbor by a surprise attack. Then Guam and Wake would fall easily into our hands. Driving down from Formosa, we would seize the Philippines. From Indochina, we would knock out Singapore. This would leave the Netherlands, East Indies, New Guinea and Australia helpless before the conquering armies of our sublime emperor. The last obstacle to our final drive would be removed. From Burma, we would overrun all India. Then, striking eastward through Midway, Pearl Harbor, and the Aleutians, we would complete the great pincer movement against the United States, whose forces by then would be hopelessly divided between the Atlantic and Pacific. At Berchtesgaden, Tojo's Axis partners were counting on America's entry into the war to slow up the ever-growing flood of Lend-Lease aid to Britain and Russia. With the United States fighting for survival in the Pacific, our Führer foresaw an end to American imperialism in Europe and North Africa, where he was planning to win the war swiftly by a series of brilliant strokes. After conquering European Russia, the Führer's forces would drive through the Caucasus oil fields into Asia Minor, where Rommel's victorious armies proceeding through Egypt 
would join them in a push to India in junction with our Japanese allies. With the great heartland of Europe, Asia and North Africa in his hands, the Führer would be ready for his final goal, conquest of North and South America. But first, the supply lines, the jugular vein of the United Nations must be choked off. From bases in Norway, our bombers must wipe out the convoy route to Murmansk. In the Mediterranean, our air forces must prevent convoys from getting through to Malta and Egypt. Our great submarine fleet operating out of bases in conquered France and Norway was assigned a major share in sweeping the Atlantic clear of Allied convoys. At our impregnable bases, the Führer had built up the greatest submarine fleet in history to dominate the Atlantic and end any Allied hopes of decisive help from America. Operating in massed echelons, they were to prey on shipping along the coasts of North and South America. And they were to disrupt the ocean supply lines to Britain and Russia, thinly guarded for lack of escort ships. With Hitler's plan already close to succeeding, the United States Navy began improvising defenses. Along the vulnerable North American coast, small craft sufficiently seaworthy to leave harbor were bought or commandeered to form a Corsair fleet, whose patrol vessels waged a valiant but almost ineffectual battle against the U-boats. Long neglected lighter than air craft were found to be one of the most deadly enemies of the U-boat. Navy blimps, though pitifully inadequate in number, proved themselves invaluable in protecting convoys anywhere within a hundred miles of the shore. Operating out of hastily established naval air stations from Newfoundland to Trinidad, the Navy's big patrol bombers added another measure of protection for convoys. Working against great odds, flying and fighting in all weather, learning by experience the secret of coordination with surface craft, the air patrol grew in efficiency. The battle against the U-boats, whose attacks on vital tankers and bauxite carriers had littered American beaches with oil and debris, became more and more evenly fought. Within a few months, the effectiveness of Nazi submarines approaching the North American coast had been greatly reduced by the vigilance of the Navy's flyers. But only on rare occasions were they able to catch a U-boat on the surface and attack it with positive results. Tauchstationen. Schneller, schneller, los. Alles bereit. Tauchen. 